three, two, one. Um, the first thing we're going to be doing is verifying trig identities. And we have done this before with other trig identities. Um, it's where they give us the answer and we got to find out how they got it. So, ooh, that pen is writing big. This is just, that's why this is on like 160. So verifying, not, I'm not working well today, trig identities, right? And so what we're saying with that is we are going to take something that's equal to something else and we're going to prove how we got there. So if we look at our first one, call it A, if I have the cosine of pi over 2, minus x equals sine of x. What I need to do is show how we got from here to here. And we're going to use this, right? Because we have cosine of pi over 2 minus x. Well, we could call this u and this v and, and see where we get with it, right? So if I have cosine of pi over 2 minus x, I'm going to use my cosine of u minus v. So we could write that as, and we can make this u and this v, right? And we can write that as cosine of pi over 2 times cosine of x. And then we could go minus sine of pi over 2 times sine of x. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to find those values where we have the pi over 2. And if we look at this, we can I can tell you that the, the, the point at pi over 2 is 0, 1, right? If we come up here on the unit circle, right, our point is going to be 0, 1. Sine is our y, right? This one is sine. This one is cosine. So cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. And I can just replace those. If cosine of pi over 2 is 0, I can go 0 times cosine of x minus sine of pi over 2. Well, that's just 1 times sine of x. And if we look at this, 0 times anything is 0. So I'm just left with negative sine of x, which I believe is what the problem was supposed to be, right? Or what am I wrong? Why is it negative? Why is sine over x? Did I write the right trig identity? Oh, that's why. I just wrote the trig identity wrong. With the minus, I was supposed to have a plus in here. I'm like, okay, I know I had this right when I did it earlier. So, did you see the error I made? I used the adding instead of the subtracting. And so, not difficult if you actually pay attention, right? which one you're using as opposed to what I did. So if we fill it out, we should be able to find a value to plug in that will eliminate one and bring it down to the other. So we are going to try another one, and we're going to go with um, we're going to go with the color blue, which is more important than anything, whether or not we're using the right color. We're going to go sign of x minus pi over 2, right, equals negative cosine of x. And so when we look at this, we've got sine of x minus pi over 2, 
and we are going to use our formula for that one, right? Which will be um, sine of x u minus v, right? So we've got sine of u times cosine of v minus cosine of u sine of v, right? And we're just going to make this our u and this our v. And we will have sine of x times cosine of pi over 2. And then we'll have minus um, cosine of x sine of pi over 2. And conveniently, we know our pi over 2, right? We already know it's the same point we used the last time. So we have 0 and 1. And this is our cosine, and this is our sine. And we can just substitute those in where our pi over 2 is. So here we have sine of x, that doesn't change, times cosine of pi over 2, well, that's just 0, minus cosine of x times sine of pi over 2, which is just 1. And when we multiply sine of x times zero, we get zero. And so we are left with negative cosine of x, which is what we wanted, right? And so we're showing how we got there. Do not just tell me it's true, right? Don't just tell me some, look at it and tell me it's true. You have to show me one spot down to the next spot, right? Um, and when we're verifying, we're showing how we got there. I almost wish, any time that we did math problems that I could just give you the answer because I don't really care what the answer is. I care about how you got to the answer. And I always found it helpful when I knew what the answer I was trying to find was because I'd know if I was doing it right by whether or not I got there. So I'm not one of those people who cares if you go and find the answer or you look in the back of the book for the answer because I care more about how you get there. Right, and sometimes I think that just helps with that process of finding it. Um, the other bit we have to do is deriving these reduction formulas. And that's what all these kind of are, is reduction formulas. And we're talking about how we come up with them now. Um, and it's not that much more difficult, if at all more difficult. Let's move these pictures down a little bit, though, so that they're in our frame of reference. I don't have to go so far for them because we will still need them. Any questions so far before I move on to this part? Everybody good? You're allowed to say no if you aren't. <clears throat> so what we're trying to do here is we are going to try and write each expression in Oh, as a as a trig function, as a trig, let's say, trig function of only theta. So you're going to be given cosine of theta minus 3 pi over 2. And we want to put it in terms of just theta. We want that 3 pi over 2 to be gone. We're still going to use the same process. We still have a u and we still have a v and we can still break it down using cosine of u minus v. So we could rewrite this as cosine of theta times cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus 
sine of theta times cosine, uh, I'm sorry, times sine of 3 pi over 2. So the first thing we need to know is what are sine and cosine at 3 pi over 2. And if we look 3 pi over 2, I know it's really tiny on here, but 3 pi over 2 are, are 0 and negative 1. They're this point right here. So we can say that 0 is our cosine and negative 1 is our sine at 3 pi over 2. So all we have to do now is substitute those in, right? So this would be cosine, I cannot write today. I don't know what's wrong with me. So here we have cosine of theta times cosine at 3 pi over 2. Well, that's just 0. Plus sine of theta times sine at 3 pi over 2, which is just negative 1. Cosine times 0, just like anything else, times 0 is just 0. Sine times negative 1 becomes negative sine theta. And now we have this expression only written in terms of theta, right? We have a trig function that's only in terms of theta. Um, that's all this means. So don't let the words fool you. Look at your notes. If it says derive the reduction formulas or write something in, in, in terms of a function of theta, that's all they're trying to do, right? You only want, the only variable you want in here is theta, is what that's saying. Um, let's look at another one. What if we have, what if we write in purple? Oh, that's a good color. I'm thinking about coloring my hair purple. You guys are like silent. You're like everything's Let's do the same thing with tangent of theta plus 3 pi. I like this one because we didn't play much with the tangent before when we did this. I don't, I don't think we did really much in terms of tangent examples. Um, but tangent makes it really easy which formula to pick because we only have right our tangent plus or tangent minus. I guess we could say that with sine and cosine too. Um, in this case, we're dealing with the plus formula, right? So we have tangent u plus tangent v. And if we write that, we've got tangent of theta plus tangent of 3 pi over 1 minus tangent u tangent v. So the first thing we have to do is figure out what is tangent at 3 pi. Well, what is 3 pi? If we think of it in terms of our unit circle, if I have my unit circle here, right? Ooh, I like it when it does that sometimes. Look at that. That was good. Look at that art. I cannot even. Apparently, I can't lean back when I do these things here. So if I have this and I have this, this is 0 or 2 pi, right? This is pi. So if I go all the way around, I get to 2 pi, come back here, this would be 3 pi, right? So our point here at 3 pi would be negative 1, 0, right? Our y doesn't go up at all. We're negative 1. Everything's one unit, right? So in this case, we've got negative 1 zero, right? This would be our sine. This would be our cosine, right? But tangent is, excuse me, sine over cosine. But what are we looking at with this? If I have 
sine over cosine, that becomes zero over negative one, which is just zero. So our tangent is just zero at three pi. Does that make sense? Okay. So when I go to fill this in, I go, okay, well, I've got tangent theta because we don't know what that is yet, but we know tangent at three pi is plus zero over one minus tangent of theta times zero gives me tangent of theta over one, right? Because this one's going to cancel out, which is just tangent of theta. So we got everything in terms of theta, which was all we were looking for. Does that make some sense? I, I pulled out another tangent one in a minute because I want you to see it where it's not just zeroing out. Um, but I'm going to do one more sine one, and I kind of want you guys to work along with me on this one. So let's look at – yes, Alex? All right, that's all right. I was all excited. I thought someone had a question. <laughs> Here we have sine of 3 pi over 2 minus theta, right? And we're trying to write this in terms of theta. So we're going to use our sine u minus sine v, right? Um, I'm not going to go. <laughs> And show it to you, but I have it written down. So this time we're using sine u minus sine v, right? Right there. Sine u times cosine v minus cosine u sine v. One of these days I'm going to memorize all of these. Like sometimes I think I have, but I never trust myself. So here I have sine of 3 pi over 2 times. Was it cosine of theta? Um, and I think this one goes to plus. No, it is minus. Uh, minus cosine u sine v. Minus cosine 3 pi over 2 sine of theta. And so 3 pi over 2. When we're looking at 3 pi over 2, our point is down here, right? It's this point down here. And so if we're looking at that, we have a 0 in our x and a negative 1 in our y. So in this case, our sine equals negative 1 and our cosine equals 0, right? So sine, we've got negative 1 times cosine of theta minus cosine, which is just 0, right, times sine of theta. And so when we multiply this through or when we add it through, these are just going to cancel, and we are going to be left with negative cosine of theta. So nothing too difficult, right? It's all substitution. If you know how to find the pieces of information, you shouldn't have any trouble doing the problems. The next and last example that I'm doing will be the hardest one you come across. And it's really not that hard because it's still going to follow the same procedure. You're just substituting things in, right? Finding the values and then solving. It's just a matter of knowing where to find the pieces of information.
So if you can do this one, you should be able to do any of them on the homework. So here we have tangent of theta minus pi over four, right? And again, our tangents are the weird ones, right? You wind up with like tangent of u plus tangent of v over one minus tangent u tangent v. Um, and what does that look like in reality? It looks like tangent of theta plus tangent of pi over four over one minus tangent of theta tangent of pi over four. So the first thing we need to know is what is tangent at pi over four? Well, if you remember, pi over four is that 45 degree angle. Um, so you're going to wind up with radical two over radical two, radical two over radical two for both cosine and sine. But we need that in terms of tangent, which is sine over cosine. So we need to figure out tangent. So we need to take our radical two over radical two over two. Right. This would be our sine. This would be our cosine. And all we have to do to solve that is take rad two over two times the reciprocal, which is two over rad two. And we would just wind up with one. Right. Because we wind up with the same things over each other, which just gives us one. And so anywhere we have tangent of pi over four now, we can just plug in one. which gives us tangent theta plus one over one minus tangent theta times one, which just gives us tangent theta plus one over one minus tangent theta. That is our solution. We've done everything it's asked of us. We've broken it down so our only variable left is theta. So, and as I said, this is as hard as it gets, right? And it's just realizing where to stop really with that one. Like, do I have to keep finding other identities to figure this out? And you might think, oh, well, it kind of looks like a Pythagorean identity with the plus one, but it's not squared. So it's not a Pythagorean identity. So this is where you would stop with it. Any questions regarding that? It really is just kind of a substitution game, right? Sure. Tangent theta minus tangent. Did I use the wrong one? Did I use the wrong formula? I did use the wrong formula. But yes, so the only difference is, is there'd be a minus, instead. it'd be minus instead of plus. Do you see what he's saying? I, uh, I grabbed the wrong formula, so this would be uh, minus, and this would be plus, was that it, William? Like that? Okay. Which would make this minus one. It would make this plus one. Okay. I messed that up on purpose, just so you guys would realize I'm human. <laughs> Any other questions with that? No? I haven't put up the homework yet, but it's still the same homework as the last time. So if you want to access it, again, I'll put it over to this week's as well. Um, this assignment is just going to be numbers 57 through 68, and I'm having you do all of them. Um, 
because I want you well practiced. If you have questions, please come in with them on Thursday. Um, Thursday, I don't know what, I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I haven't decided if I want to do like a full lesson because I don't really want to be collecting homework and the testing and then not have time to help you with it if you have questions because we're in testing. Um, so it might be like an in-class, something we do together type of thing on Thursday. Um, everyone who participates will get points. Um, so, but I, I will let you know how, how that goes. This is, if it helps you, page 379. Um, those of you online, you are free to check out. Um, I'm going to stop recording.